Okay, and today uh, we are going to continue the conversation that we started yesterday. Yesterday, I told you of a woman that created a scene in a popular bank, the reception hall of a very popular bank, and she was uh, displaying. In fact, if you've seen the video, she was crying, displaying, say, saying that her money, six hundred thousand naira, disappeared from her account. And she has saved this money for a long period and nobody came to take it from her. She was, she kept the money well, nothing happened to it until she took the money to the bank and now the money is gone. So this is not the first time we hear stories of people and after using the POS, it showed transaction failed or pending, the money left their account, they went to the bank, they could not resolve it. So we hear a lot of cases concerning this and there is what we also call the uh, into electronic banking fraud. So today we're going to be speaking to an expert because uh, he's, he's going to tell us more about this, how we can secure our goodie back, our money, how we can secure it, what we can do if anything of such happens. So uh, today I have with me via the network, Mr. Nelson Ojo Ojobo. No. Can you hear me? Yeah, Ojovo. Ojovo. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yes, Ojovo. Thank Ojovo, you. Ojovo, yeah. Ojovo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now, That's he's a cybersecurity consultant and instructor with more than six years' experience helping various small, medium, and large organizations, both in Nigeria and outside Africa, to design and implement effective cybersecurity solutions to meet their business need. And is currently working as a cyber security consultant to a prominent company here in nigeria and also abroad so he is into this full time and today thank god you're here we have a lot of questions for you now to start with, right. to start the conversation we want to know what this electronic bank fraud is in nigeria what what is it all about well i the the most important thing about electronic bank fraud is to withdraw money from your account people are looking for diverse ways to withdraw money without your authorization you know without your permission so you know fraud is going beyond and and above the bar every now and then but i think most of these fraud activities cannot happen without your permission that's what people don't know. Really? Somebody cannot just get your phone number or your account details and just withdraw. At some point or the other, you, you would have um, either exposed certain sensitive information about your account without knowing. In cybersecurity, there's a common saying, woman element is the weakest element. Hmm. These fraudsters, they find a way to... Um, um, entice you with certain things, either call your phone number, ask you for, um, um, call you to ask you and say, uh, uh, I'm calling from Sususu Bank. Um, your account has not been updated. We want you to update your PVN details. You know, uh, please confirm the last four digits of your ATM. And you would have given them or they would have sent you an SMS. So the thing is that at some point, they need you to um, provide either your PIN or they steal your phone or your SIM card. And at that point, they are going to use it to draw money from your account. So electronic fraud, the intent is just to collect your money. That's what we, um, a lot of um, um, fraudsters do. But I, I don't know, I, I think there, there's a lot of things, security control that we ourselves need to put in place. Because I see this kind of thing happen, just like the story you just said, I mm -hmm. see it happen every now and then. The question is, people, we ourselves, we are not security, we are, we are not responsible when it comes to security. I, would, I know of a friend last year, she had never used a uh, password on her phone because she feel that it is stressful. A lot of people are out there, they say, okay, I don't open internet bank account. Uh, I, I'm just using an Android phone. I don't have the app on my phone. The, the fact that you don't even have the app on your phone and you've not opened a, a USSD code yeah, before yeah. doesn't mean that it wouldn't be used. They would Re steal really? your phone. Wait, 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 now, wait, wait, pause, pause. You, you, you're, we'll need to yeah, take it gently yeah. now because what you're saying is very, very important. 
you're seeing because i've heard people yeah. tell me that see i don't do internet banking i don't use ussd yeah. code i don't have the app I, I don't even have even my eight i have an atm <laughs> for withdrawing small small money where my big money i don't mm -hmm. have atm for it so it, you're saying that that is that won't work if that won't work trust me because in fact that is the easiest those are the easiest spray i'll give you an example okay i bought i bought an android phone i don't have any app on it right but that is the, my scene that is connected to my bank account you know that when the, my my account in the bank the, the scene that i have on that phone is registered to those banks that's what fraudsters are looking for they are only looking for sim that receive bank alerts if your sim does not receive bank alert they won't go near you so when a fraudster steals a phone yes the thing he does is to use that phone to buy um airtime airtime for yes. example yes or they dial a code to check if that your sim is connected a bank is registered to your account number in the bank if that is if that is the case, once they, they can successfully find that by either buying uh, data or buying uh, airtime, then the next thing they will do is to go through all your phone, your SMS messages to see, do you, to see, do they want to see your account balance? Because a lot of people, they receive SMS message, they don't yes. delete it. Yeah, I, do, I don't, people, I don't delete. So, exactly. So you, sh you should, like for me, I don't collect SMS. I prefer email. I don't want sms is open except you are deleting it secondly people store their bank account bvn as phone contact yeah so they are going to go to your phone contact why are you storing all your bank information on your phone your nim your bvn these things are wrong don't do it so why do you want to store all everything some people even on their small notepad on the phone they put their pin it is as bad as that so people use their date of birth in fact, that is the first wrong move. Because once the fraudster gets your phone, they get to check that this phone, the SIM in the phone is registered to a bank. They are happy. The next thing, they will die your USD code. Because USSD code, right? Once they die it, they want to transfer money. Either they buy money to that, they, they, sorry, they send money airtime, they buy airtime, more airtime to that your SIM. Yes. And transfer using she and sell, maybe like empty and she and sell and the like. No, or if they want to uh, attack your account, they check your SMS, see you, uh, you are using Fidelity or whatever uh, bank, they see those account ID. Now, they want to do USSD transaction. They want to transfer from your account to another bank. What they will do is that they will go and check. Um, they, 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 they either they have tools. Don't for this, uh, these guys, these fraudsters, they buy tools from China. They buy tools that can... Hmm help guess your four digit pin as soon as possible it is very easy to predict a four digit pin another another red flag is that most people use their date of birth as their four digit pin yes. yeah the, the, yeah the, yeah if you are born in maybe 1995 that's what people use and this first start no so don't get to use things that are connected to you as your pin your bvm pin or your atm pin now because they don't know your b your pin at that point they know your BVN. Either they've seen that BVN as, as a phone contact, as as uh, as saved as a phone contact. They will now use it to open another account. Maybe all this uh, loan app, yeah. you know, all this loan app. Go first money something. They download the first money app. Then they use that your BVN. Once they put that BVN, the the, the loan app or the bank will expose your date of birth, every details about your BVN. Then they will try using that a bit of bet as your pin. But if it does not work, then you are fine. If it's work, then your money is gone. So the recent one that I heard last week was that these guys even go to the bank and watch people that that are created that are going there to create new accounts or, or for ATM. It happened to somebody that I know. They will go, you, you know, when you feel information in the bank and you keep that copy that yes. other copy right yes. that's for the um what's it called and please always tear it i tell people please don't tear these guys go there to pick those things some people they don't put it in the bank that hole in the bank they just drop it somewhere and they, they see your they see all your details they will call you oh you are trying to open an atm please confirm the last four blah 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 of your bvn 
or dye this code and you will see your pin don't do if anybody call you from the bank please don't nobody nobody's going to call you from the bank to reveal any sensitive information about yourself you know that's one thing i secondly please use sim lock a lot of people don't use sim lock the person that you're talking about probably she just have pass um, phone password or lock her phone but she doesn't have a sim lock what's a sim lock what's a sim lock i don't think i even have a sim it's, lock it's, you, you need to have a sim lock so it's just like if somebody sees your phone now yes. you check that you have your phone has a passport right they are going to remove your sim and put in another phone a sim lock is a, just like you have pin you are locked in your phone you have to have a lock for your sim so that when your sim is removed and put in a different phone right it's going to ask you for that pin like my phone now i have a sim lock so when you remove my empty and sim for example yes. in a different phone it's going to ask you for that pin so that would not allow the fraudster to be able to assess your sim using different phone so don't just lock your phone lock your sim Hmm. So you, how do you lock your SIM? Go to your setting. You will see set, set up a SIM lock. Go to that part and put a four-digit pin to lock your SIM. So if once you restart your phone, it's going to ask you for your SIM lock first before your phone lock. That's what a lot of people don't do. Don't... So you need to lock your SIM, not just your phone. Hmm. Right? So the other thing is that don't download apps. Don't download apps on your phone. Somebody send you a link. Please uh, open this link and register blah, 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 on Facebook. Don't do that. Your social media account can be compromised. What they do now is that once they steal the phone and they see that they have easy access to your phone, they will use your phone to collect loans from different apps. Hmm. And yes, they, once they collect loans with your, with your account, once they see that they cannot transfer money from your bank account, they will, they will download all this loan app and use it. And for example, maybe don't save your salary account number on your phone. Don't ah. do this thing. No, you know, you're, you're, you're saying a lot of things there. Eh? As in, you, you know these things. A lot of us don't know. So as you're saying it, it's, it's fast. I'm trying to write as much as I can. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> well, ah, you just yeah. said something now that don't save your salary account on your phone. Yes. These guys know. They, they are going to, you see, the thing is that, we we think we are smart that's not it don't always think you are smart always always be um come from that point of as uh as if you're attacked that's what how you get received always be security conscious if my phone is stolen now how can they use it against me number one it's your details number two don't put your bvn your nim anything on your phone so the question you can see that security is a big of a stress yes. it's going to stress you if security is easy lifestyle but that's the way to go that's why people fall into it because you don't want to be stressed you don't want to keep information like this i tell people the question is okay where do i store all this information about me number one you can either store them you know either um if you don't know how to cram some of this information you could put store store them somewhere on the cloud maybe some people have google email they don't use it even if you have all this Gmail, make sure that there's a two-factor authentication on your Gmail. Because once somebody sees your phone, it goes through your email addresses. So it goes through your email, see all those your sensitive information. Then what do you do from that point? Maybe your phone, look, collect uh, either a laptop, go to your email account, uh, your Gmail, change your password immediately. Change your password. So it's like somebody gets your phone. They are always looking through your phone. So just because we are talking about electronic fraud, I don't want to divert into other things. Yes. Sticking to electronic fraud, the most important thing is your SIM card, your ATM machine, your ATM card. Those are the things, and your phone. Your phone device, your SIM card, and your ATM. If you can secure them, make sure you put a SIM lock on your phone, on your SIM card. You don't put a lot of details. Delete your SMS that had to do with um, what's it called? Your 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 bank so account. So once I get a lot, I, del your... I delete. Once I get an alert, I did I delete. Exactly. Honestly, what I did to the bank, I, I went to the bank and said, I don't want SMS. I want email. That's what I do. You know, oh. tell them you want SMS. And now, in fact, your SD card, your memory, you see, yeah, it's memory card. In fact, people store a lot of information on the memory card. Your 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 device can encrypt your memory card now, and nobody will see anything about it. Oh. So 
if you have someone that's yes, yeah, if on your phone, they, see the thing is that if we have so much security features on our phone. We don't use it. People just buy iPhone and they just call. They don't know that this thing have a lot to help you. If somebody steals your phone right now, you can know where it is in the next three minutes. Uh -uh. Because Google has a new tool. Yeah, you can know, especially if that phone is has internet access. You can go on Google. Google has a tool called Find My Device. You can go on that Google, log in with your Google account. You will see the last the last destination where your device is. That's for phone tracking. That's another discussion. But for now, for the fraud thing is that make sure that you use all the security feature on your phone. Lock your phone, lock your SIM, encrypt uh, your SD card. That's your memory card. People just buy memory card. They don't know that you can encrypt it. Only that phone able to see details on that SD card. So that somebody does not see your memory card and see all your life information. You know, some people, they will, they, will, they will take their pin and do a snapshot. It's safe on your memory card. They will say, oh, I don't want to forget my four digit pin. They will do a phone snapshot. Every As you do phone snapshot of your bank details, you know, all those things save on your memory card. You need to encrypt it or you need to delete any picture about your 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 bank details delete it you don't even know you might you might and and i found this um i noticed that people if you're using uh what's it called a, um bank apps like gt bank please don't use autofill feature autofill feature is if you put your username you know that's that's long pin that your app will ask you don't don't uh, it will ask you do you want to use autofill auto yes. is like it is automatic yes, it ma it's making it easy for you now Ex exactly yes. so if somebody steals your phone they're going to use that same autofill and they just log into your app and turn it immediately don't use it always type your pin yourself your bank don't use autofill don't let things see security is hard work you know, and if you are somebody that have, uh, I, I tell people, if you are someone that have an account, a business account, please and um, please, you can also request for hardware token on use token, not just your PIN, so that before money leaves your account, you need to enter your token, you need to enter your PIN. If you know that your your account is very sensitive, hmm. <laughs> if that money go, it's like your life saving. I tell you, if you have an account and that's your life saving maybe in, in a dollar account or whatever, go and request for a token, either a software token or a hard bank. So that even if your phone is stolen, somebody tries to find your PIN, maybe accidentally, they still wouldn't be able to use transfer money from that account because they would need information about your token. That's what I did. Oh, so so you... if my phone is stolen, yeah, if my phone is stolen right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, trust me, I wouldn't mind because you can't do nothing on my phone. You know, you know, I have it. You know, these people yeah. are so fast. Like someone was sharing with me yes. that on the Ted Mailand Bridge, they stole her phone. Those guys that would break in yeah. and then they stole her phone, yeah. stole her ATM card. Before she could get off the yeah. bridge and get to call her yeah. or do something about it, they wiped yeah. her account. So the people that they, okay, they, they're so, very fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, thank you. That's a very good one. I, I, I get to see it. It's, most times they either they're doing it during weekend when banks are not working but that's why a lot of banks now have they have ussd code so when your phone is stolen if i'm in in a shoe i want to talk to somebody on on, on that on that what's it called um on that on that bus right so please my phone has been stolen i want to use your phone to block my account all the bank have a ussd code i can die put your account number and block it instantly hmm so for example i'll give you an example yes. make my phone is stolen now right in the next one minute what will i do i will try to call that number the first thing i want to do if my phone is stolen call that number it could be that you had one that misplaced it right call the number and see if it's ringing if it's not ringing it's gone right and so the next thing you want to do dial the next thing you want to do is dial a usa the bank USSD short code if you are using access bank dial the USSD short code uh, you can see this information on the internet. Know your bank short code and know your own account number too. So that once you die that short code with somebody else's phone, it will ask you for your account number. You put it and ask, do you want to suspend or block that account? Do it instantly. It means you should work. So that with... would okay. limit 
the weeks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so that, that's that's because back in the day, back back. Okay. Yeah. Can okay, you? I should, I should go ahead with my question. I said it means someone should not have yeah, about two yeah. phones, one smartphone and one other small phone. So in case the big yeah. one is stolen, you could just use the other one to die and yeah. close all your accounts. Exactly. But exactly. So, but in, in situation where you don't have two phones, right? What can you? you can and you are alone else. driving on the Ted Mayland Bridge. You're alone. They stole your phone. They stole your stuff. <laughs> now, before you descend, they wiped. So, wow. what do you do? Nobody to call. You can't call anybody. And they have. That's what happened to that lady that <laughs> was, that spoke to me. See, okay, 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 okay. Trust me. So, if if you as I say, I want to put on my security cap now, right? And I want to ask that lady a lot of question. I think for them to. Be, to be that super fast number one thing is that she doesn't have a sim lock they've probably removed her sim and use if she has a phone lock so make make sure if you have some security feature on your phone they can never be that fast just for example if they remove your sim they check your phone it is locked they remove the sim they checked it on another phone it is locked they need to find a way to unlock that sim to be able to use it so but probably are not seeing it. Uh, probably she doesn't have a phone lock or a SIM lock, so it's easy for them to e have easy access. Or she's storing a phone info, a, a bank information on that phone, so it is easy. Don't don't make these things easy for these fraud stars. So it's it's not just about somebody stealing your phone and locking it, locking the SIM, and showing that all your memory card is encrypted and don't store information on that phone and some people like you the, the case you mentioned somebody saying oh i don't use uh, pin i don't use it i've seen it up and they will download the app because now they check your sms message they see that you're using first bank they'll download first bank app from google store download it then they will request you create a pin because you can create a pin you, if you die ussd for example if i have an mtn sim card yes that is registered to Mm. create a pin just using ussd so they will help you they will create it for you and use your account that's oh, the thing so it's, even, it's even easier for them they if you don't, if you don't you, have any of sure that your phone like using the bank don't to that's my you know or stuff and you know most of these customers say what they will ask you can you mention the last three um accounts or your balance because if they have an sms they will they know your balance they've checked your last balance hmm. you know or they uh, can you mention the last three digits or or that sim card we use it's like they call this customer service and use your phone the details on your phone you know to create or reset your pin so I get to listen to a lot of these fraud stars their calls. One of the things they will tell you, don't use your date of birth as your PIN or your PVN PIN. Now, now, let, now let's move to... You can use to guess your PIN. Okay, now let's move to another... You talked your about... Your PIN is just for the easy to get tools that can guess it. Okay, now yeah. an, another, another issue here is the people that they get, they use POS, or maybe they did a transaction and it didn't go through maybe all they are just there and money moved out of oh, their account okay. they go to the bank and tell the bank okay look so so at this amount of money left my account and the bank said okay wait for seven for seven yeah. working days and then we'll transfer we'll give you the money back so they keep waiting and nothing happens they wait nothing happens go to the bank, bank tell them come back again come back again so that's another case people complain about Saying that it's like there is fraud in some of our banks, that there is yeah. there are some people there that are taking money. That's when someone even told me that let me tell you the rat that is eating the food is in the cupboard. Saying the people that are selling the money are even in the bank. And I use POS is just decline and then they yeah. take money from your account. Normally the bank should give you the money in seven days or seven working days or five days. But you keep yeah. going and they will not give you the money back. Or they will transfer the money to you. And later, they will take the money out of your account again, saying that the money went to the POS operators after like two weeks, three weeks. So it, there's something we don't really understand what's really happening with our banks. Can you can you give us an understanding of this? 
find myself in that kind of scenario, right? I'll find myself in that scenario. There, I, I would really, uh, I, this, in this, in this, I I think it was late last year, I went to an ATM and to withdraw like about uh, some money. Yeah. And uh, they, 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 they beat my account and I didn't see anything for over like a month. So I had to go back and forth from the bank to the PO. Uh, agent, right? I went to the bank to explain my um, because the first thing you, the, the first person you are complaining to is the POS person. Oh, the bank has, is not from our side again. Let's wait for the bank to either check and refund you, and you are waiting three or four days. And true to be told, a lot of our banks to have issues in this regard. Complaints are not resolved on time, and people are. You know they are not getting comfortable what i did in my situation was to talk to somebody in the bank point did you collect the money from the pos agent did you see the uh, what's it called the alert the request from the pos agent to debit my account they said they saw it okay did you deb and of course they debited my account yeah. why am i not saying it they said uh, uh there was uh, a delay in their transaction, uh, I know how this bank they will explain certain things I do not really understand. So for me, they said I should go back to the um, uh, what's it called, the POS agent that they already have the details and all that they've reverted it back, just like your question, they've reverted it back to the POS agent. I should go back there. I went back to the POS, he said, No, it's, there's nothing in their own account. I should go back to the bank. So it was always this back and forth. So what I did honestly was to go talk to the bank, uh, you know, when you get to the bank, say customer service. I, I had to, I had to go beyond the customer service this time around to report the case. I, I wrote an email. So I think it's sometimes bank, this bank. Three FM. Okay, we are having some network challenge here, but we'll try to connect with him again. And then uh, we'll get him back on air to continue the conversation. I'm already getting calls. I know there are lots of questions. I know you have lots of questions. I'll open the phone line so that he can answer the questions uh, that right. you have. Okay, yeah. okay. You're back. You were off yeah. for a minute. I guess it oh, was okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the most important thing is to stick to the bank. The bank is the issue here yeah, because the POS guys doesn't have rights to remove money from your bank it has to be the bank if money leave your account it is coming from the bank make your request to the bank if they are not responding take it escalate it forward you need to escalate that's what i did you need to escalate it forward and you did make mention of something uh initially yes there are people in the bank that are called uh they are, you know not everybody works in the bank with uh good intent there are people there with also bad intents that help facilitate you know this thing but once you have proof, the thing is that once money leaves your account, make sure you have snapshot to back it up, you know, and uh, report this. If it's not resolved, seek for their manager's um, um, attention so that you explain and escalate this issue. What I did in my situation, I have to escalate it beyond the customer service. And that's when my money was refunded after like over like a month. Did, did, did you did you so create, did you create a, a scene? Did you create a scene when you got there? Did you create a scene? <laughs> no, no. So I didn't create a scene. But the thing is, I didn't create a scene. But the thing is that it's your money, right? So if anybody is creating a scene, you have the permission to do that because the bank, if, it, if the, the bank is responsible, you have a responsibility, and the bank also have their responsibility. They are, they are removing bank charges, so you have they, they need to help you secure your account. I didn't create a scene. I just requested to see somebody, um, you know, uh, beyond just the customer service. You, saw, you saw the manager. You saw the bank manager. Uh, yes, I get. To, yes, I get to speak to the manager. So please, if uh, these guys are not responding, you have the right. It's your money. Talk to them. The POS guys are not the one that would debit. But you may or something. Please, before you use a POS machine, be very careful. Now this POS machine, and they put something like a cell tape. A um a, a transparent tape. yeah please watch this before you put your pin because once you type your pin your arm your printed arm is seen there 
they can see that this is your pin and don't atm and she don't tell oh god please let me check this atm if somebody's trying to look at your atm your digits please be careful don't drop your atm a card sorry or uh, to a uh, operator just because you know the person don't do that don't drop it and so oh god what's your pin let me don't do it you know and please if you get a new atm card don't say uh and you want uh, oh god please it's not working and somebody's standing behind you and you're trying to reset your pin somebody already knows about that pin it's just a four digits number it's easy for for anybody to grab so only use legitimate operators number one that you know are credible only use legitimate operators and secondly if you have issues with bank debit mm -hmm. make sure that after making a request and they're not responding visit the bank and try to escalate things try to see somebody that could resolve the matter in no time mm -hmm. it's your money and it's, it's their responsibility for them to provide now let, let, let me open the phone lines because i know beyond the questions i have there are people that have more questions even deeper questions so the number is 0700 903 9039 that's the number to call in right now if you have a question that you want our cyber security expert to help you with 0700 903 9039 or you could send in a WhatsApp message and then I will read the WhatsApp message out so that uh, he could answer 039. So that's it. Okay, another interesting angle to this is concerning this fraud is when it happens to you, what can you yeah. do? Is there a way you could recover your money? It has happened. It's already happened. Maybe someone called you and then we, we, we have a caller. Let's take, okay, the call is gone. Now, someone already happened to you, they called you and you gave out your information and they took money from your account. What can you do? But hold, yeah. the, hold the thoughts. Let, let me take this call. Hello? Hello, good morning. Okay, I've lost the call. Okay, go, go, go ahead, sir. Okay, so what can you do when this happened, right? There, mm -hmm. that's where you know we, we spoke about the, the, the first time we spoke about telling the bank calling the, or using us ussd code right to suspend that account so number one but in this scenario it has already happened go to the bank and report the issue because now some don't forget if money is leaving your account it's not going directly um uh, as cash is being transferred to another account you know and what this fraudster do they call it no trace account no trace account, to open an account using somebody's bvn so that they don't get to be traced but still yet call make that request immediately to the bank explain what has happened so they will on their record they will see where the money has gone to maybe another another bank you know another bank account so they, they'll get a track it that, oh, this money has been transferred to this bank account. They look at the bank, if it's the same bank, they look at the details of that person and try to contact that person to do a reform. So the bank will be very um, by voter in this place. You know, okay, we, we, ha we, ha we have a caller here. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good and morning. Thank for my papa. Okay. Thanks for this program you are doing. But I want to advise Nigerians, okay? Hello? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. I want to advise Nigerians, okay? You, if you want to be using all these internet banking and ATM in your account, open a separate account. We are by the money that is in that account. If it goes, you will not be affected so much, okay? Because you, you can move up for tens of years and all of a sudden your money has gone. That person, that person, my, 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 my shop and 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 that. So I just an advice. No, but from what, from what the, from what he is saying, he said that wouldn't work. If you have another account that has maybe your, your block money, as your big money, and you don't have anything concerning internet about that money, you don't have any ATM or anything. He's saying that they can also get. It's easier to get access to that money. That's what the the cyber security expert is saying now. Because those people can use that your phone number that you used to open that account, although you don't have ATM, you don't have any internet banking, and they will just quickly download the app, open it for you there in their own house, and withdraw that money. That's what he's trying to explain. So that one might not work. 
Okay, then, 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 then you, you take it up with the bank. When they have taken the money, the fraudster has yes, emptied the it, account. The bank must surely pay. We take it up with the bank. We know that your money has not lost. We take it up with the bank. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your contribution. Yeah. You know, when someone takes your money, moves your money from your account, yeah. it means they yes. got a form of authorization, like you said. So the bank does not even have mm -hmm. the power to take the money back from that account and give to you, right? It's against, yeah. the, it's against the law. So there has to be another form yeah. of authorization from the person that owns that account for them to lift the money and give back to you, right? Yes. So what, yes. what someone yes. can They're do correct. from your explanation is if you have a mm -hmm. large sum of money in one account, it is not safe to say, I don't have ATM, I don't do internet transaction with that account, I don't have any link with that account. That is not safe. That what you could do is have a token right you said have a token yeah. so that token is in your hand token. so if anybody do a mobile uh, app whatever they need you to generate a number from the token that you have in your hand yeah yes to give yeah. them that number before they could perform the transaction that one is safer yeah okay that's I'm safer like you need the token and the pin together to make any form of transaction hmm. so you know normally it's just ask you for your pin but now you have a token. Now, if in fact, I get to see that they have software token. You don't, it doesn't need a hardware device. It could be a software token. So, but before money will be, before money will be trans, uh, uh, make uh, transferred, it will ask you for your PIN and also your token. Okay. We, we have another caller here. Hello. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah. yeah good morning. Uh, good um, morning. Welcome. What's your name and your location? Uh, I'm Jude calling from Mushi, exactly. Okay, go ahead. What's uh, your question? Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy for this uh, this program this month because mm -hmm. this is what really happened to me yesterday. You understand? Yeah. Like, they stole my phone. They just stole it because the moment I entered, I don't know how to start. They stole the phone. So I'm just trying to, like, track it because the one that is just me now is the tracking one. Is there any way someone can track it and like get the proof back because they are saying that maybe if they track it that they are not going to see it or something like that. But I want to know if is there any way they can track it and get it back. Okay, 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 thank you. He to answer your question. Yeah. He said they stole his phone. If there's a way he could track like you said something about tracking the device as in on your phone you could track you could track your phone if you stole it. Yes. Said something about that. Okay, um Try to pull up uh, the there's a there's a uh, what's it called? The, uh, what kind of phone first, first of all what kind of phone is it is it a an Android phone or what, what kind of phone it, mm. it, does it have a Google account does he have a Google account on the phone because if somebody is going to if you are going to use the feature to track right yeah to track you have to have a Google account so because it's Google, it's Google that owns that feature. You know, it's Google that owns that feature. You have to have like a Google Gmail account. So you that feature is already embedded to Google. All you need to do is uh, um, look for another phone or a laptop to enter that uh, what's it called that feature. Just like as if you are opening a Gmail using somebody else's phone to open your Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail, um, it's going to a little bit be difficult because it's uh, Google's um, uh, what's it called feature that you can use to do okay, that okay. like my phone have a go i'm using google um, gmail i'm using google's um, um what's it called platform so if you steal my my phone right now and i want to know where it is because it is online um you know um uh, google is tracking your location uh, you have this location feature every time oh, Don't, wow. if for me it's a safe a lot of people a lot of people say yes it's good to disable the location feature but for me the reason why i get to turn on my location feature so if you if this phone is i know that the location feature is who can use that their app you know like the google map to track the location of this phone so most uh, every time i'm very intentional on owning my location so that it will help me know because if the location is not on and your phone is not online it's you will not be able to track it except you want to go through there's another route yeah 
you can make a, but that is that is not open to everybody. That has to be either, either through the court request to like your service provider for them to track your SIM. But that is not like it's a long process. You have to make a call. You know, there, there will be like a court request or a legal request. You know. Okay, hold on. We have an, we have another team. caller on the line. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning to you. What's your name and yeah, your location? This is Chichi calling from Oshodi. Okay, welcome, Chichi. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, I'm a first time caller. Oh, welcome to my program. It's our program here, Voice of the People. Welcome, welcome. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested in this program. Okay. Like uh, the guy in the studio mentioned about token. Yes. And uh, if I there was a time I did transfer of uh, over a million. Yes. And uh, the art of token, hardware token and software token. Mm. So I entered software token, and within a short while they sent a four-digit number to me. Yeah. And I entered it. Yeah. I was allowed access and they uh, released the money. Yeah. So now, if it is somebody that stole that phone, but God forbid, mm -hmm. and the bank did not ask for the person or call to say, okay, are you the one that want to remove this money from your account before allowing it to go? But that was not done. Is it not easy for them also to remove somebody's money through this means? Mm. Thank you. That's a very valid question. Thank you so much, Madam Chichi. So, so, so you see, see what she's saying. The, okay. the token, even if it's soft token, someone still that stole your phone can also request for a token, right? Um, no, you can request for a token, which you have to go to the bank to request for a token. No, no, okay, no. It's I, not just like you. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand the question she asked? Now you want to withdraw uh, a okay. large am amount of money from your 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 account, and they say you should generate a number with your token that you have. So maybe you do a soft. Yeah, a, yeah. You have a soft token, so you generated it is with your mm -hmm. phone too, and the phone and your bank okay. not calling you or sending you a notification that somebody is about to move this amount of money from your account. So if someone steals account, your yeah, be. someone steal, steals your phone, the person yeah. can use the soft token right to generate can to generate yeah. that number right. Yes, they can use the soft token to generate that number. But again, like I told, it's not just the soft token alone. Now, if you if you if you so far in the last few minutes we've been talking a lot about different layer of security. Yes. It's not just the soft token. Now in that first question first do you have is um do you have a phone lock because for somebody to use if you use biometry there's no way in the world somebody can hack a biometry is that in your your what's it called your your uh, fingerprint or you're using a what's it called this uh, uh, screen lock do you have a screen lock make it difficult that's one first layer now let's say they bypass the screen lock or your 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 uh, uh, your phone password uh, and get into your sim Secondly, right, just like you've mentioned, there's a software token and there's a PIN. The person does not know your PIN. At the point of making a, a transfer, the bank is asking you for a PIN in combination with your soft token. Now, the, that PIN, that four digits PIN, yeah. how would they get it? If you are not using your date of birth, how would ask oh, yourself? Or if it's as a PIN, phone contact, some, somebody, if you go to some people's phone, you see my PIN, my bank PIN, and they say with four digits, or they say with somebody, or they have a snapshot of their PIN when they register. Hmm. So it's not so, it must be a software token and your PIN. It's, you can't tell me that it's going to be that easy for somebody to know over like, five digits pin and uh, sorry soft token and also your pin even if you are using a software token and they see those uh, you no know, random string of numbers but what about your digits pin how would they find that easy if you are not using your date of birth or you okay oh, hold on we, we have another caller here hello oh, we that called, called before okay concerning the tracking Yes. Uh, he, he said about the phone. Actually, the phone is uh, Oppo. Okay, Oppo, means it's uh, a, Oppo is a smartphone, right? 
there's not and I have my email and uh, this thing inside. I open Google, but what I'm saying, if both of you the person off the phone and the phone is off, because once you off, everything is, it will not be working. I don't know. Okay. If there is a thing off the phone, you can be able to track it and know where the phone is exactly. Okay. Okay, thank you. Did you get his question? You know, you know what is happening in the studios? I'm getting a lot of calls okay. and just one call. Before you explain one one question, explain one, give one answer thoroughly. I've gotten like 20 calls. So <laughs> there is so much to talk here. Now, this person that just called, you know, he called before. You ask about his type okay. of his, his type of phone, what kind of phone he uses, if it's yes. Android smartphone. He said it's a smartphone. Yes. But he wants to know if the phone is off. I don't know if you got his question. Yes. No, he is, um, I, I couldn't hear him very clearly. Okay. So that was... Okay, he said he, said he used he use a smartphone and if the phone is... Yeah. And he has uh, the Gmail, he has Gmail on the phone. He, he, has, he has a Gmail okay. account. And then what about if the person that stole the phone switched it off? Will yes. he be able to track yeah. the phone? That's the thing. That's you will only be able to see the last location of that phone if you are using the Google feature. But again, please, and there have to be like a, a request to the service provider, like an MT, to the MT to see. I've seen it before happen. Somebody's phone stolen, but he had to go through that process, and they track the because it's only your service provider that can track your scene correctly and give it the right location because except if that person has also removed the scene hmm. from that phone and it can either and there's a there's a there's a there's a, an id every phone has what we call i n e i international mobile equipment identifier number they can also track your phone device using the i n e i if the person what these guys if they're smart these guys they will remove the scene turn it off right Right? So the Google location can, except if the person is still using your SIM card, if it's not, if it's still using your SIM card, you can know the exact location, the last location where it is. Your service provider can find that for you. But for yourself, what can you do if your phone, if the person, if the phone is still on, like it's connected to the internet, you could use the Google so Find My Device. That's the feature on Google. Find My Device. If you go on Google and type Find My Device, and you have Gmail, right? You see it. It will ask you to enter your Gmail username and password. Then it will try to locate the the last point where your phone was seen when it was online. But that, uh, of course, that could not be can might not be a, a good information. The person might have left that location or turned it off. So these are the two ways. Either you are using your service provider to track the SIM itself, or you are using the Google uh, Find My Device feature. Hmm. Now, now. Great. See the last location of that phone. Now, to the beginning of the conversation, before I ask you the last question, or wait, let me just give you this two last question first. If your money has been taken, your account has been cleared. Yeah. What can you do? You already yeah. made the mistake. Someone saw your pin, or you don't know how you gave out your information, and they've cleared your money. What can you do to sure. get your okay. money back? Yeah. Can the bank give you your money back? What can you do? I, 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 this is very, this is a very difficult one, right? So, but the thing is, like, first thing, go to the bank and make a complaint because that is where that's where your money is, and it was from that um, that uh, account that the money is transferred. What can you do? You want to know where the money has moved to, and only one person can tell you where the money has moved to because if you don't know where the money has moved to, there's no hope of bringing that money back. Go to the bank, they do their investigation. The bank have an investigative team that would help you investigate that kind of issues. But again, please, security is everybody's responsibility. Most times, once money leaves your account, that it doesn't come back. The reason being that these guys don't use their own account number. They do you know that the account number that they create just for fraudulent activities? Hmm. Great. I'm telling you, this first they, they, will, they will ask you, they will ask their friend, do you have a B? All you need to open an account right now is a BVN. So they call it no trace account. They create a no trace account such that if the bank starts investigating to the point where the, the account, where 
the fund is being used to, they wouldn't have enough information. They would be picking the wrong person. So fraudsters look for a BVN. When they steal phones, they, 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 they look, don't store your BVN. They, will, they can use your BVN to create, create bank account, a new account. So to answer your question, bank, talk to the bank. Is there any possibility me getting this money back immediately? So the bank will do their investigation and see if there's a way to talk to uh, maybe the other bank where the money was transferred to, if they can suspend that account. Yes, there's a high, there's also a possibility of you getting your money back. Once the bank knows where the money was transferred to, they can send a request to suspend that account so that money does not leave it. Okay, okay. You know, the truth is that prevention is better than cure. Prevention is I better that's, than that's cure. It. So for what you have said, that's now it. back to the beginning of the conversation concerning our mobile phones, that we should not store sensitive information on our mobile yep. phones. That's one. Then Don't we should put it. a Don't password in, on our phone and also uh, lock our SIMs. Can you go over yeah, those, those uh, security checks again? Okay. Okay, so the first one, make sure you lock your phone. Has, have a phone lock, number one. Number two, have a SIM lock. Have a SIM lock. Lock all your SIMs. You can do it. Go to set, uh, set up a SIM lock feature on your phone. Settings. Lock, have... Ha, um, lock your SIM. Third, thirdly, if you have if you have sensitive information on your memory, encrypt your memory card. There's also a feature on your phone to encrypt that. Number four, don't store um, sensitive information. Your BVN details, your NIM, your account details as your phone contacts. Don't do that. If possible, delete your SMS messages or just use email to receive SMS alert. Number five, number five, I want to talk, don't download untrusted application. There are a lot of hackers that use on the create application and, and, and um, somebody say, you send that, send, send it to me. Don't download, don't collect application from any other third party. Go to Google Play Store to download it. And don't just download any application that you don't know how to use. Those applications could be reading your details on the needs. They use some virus to do that, mm. some, some malware to write to do that, you know. And because we are talk, talking about fraudulent activities, also make sure that um, if your phone is stolen, know, know the USSD code of your bank, know it's offered, know your account number, so that if, for example, your phone is stolen, you could suspend your account immediately. You could die. That's USSD code, you know, go online, you see a lot of them, all the bank have the USSD code to, for you to suspend your account if there's any, uh, if, for example, your phone is stolen. And also, I would mention about using a token, you know, especially for your account, use, um, use a token, right? Use a token and your PIN. And don't of that as your PIN, because the four digits so a lot of people want to use 1995 because you know it's easy for you something your date of birth is so the year of your birth something to, to ask your pin don't do it don't don't okay. do that don't take thank snapshot of your pin don't use auto fuel future also uh, thank you so much thank you so much for being part of the program it's really been insightful educative and revealing it's a pleasure speaking with you we've been talking with mr nelson right. ojivbo is a, a cyber security consultant and instructor with more than six years experience helping a lot of people businesses individuals on how to secure their account help the organization in nigeria and africa thank you so much for being part of the program and we couldn't take all the calls and all the oh, messages so hopefully we're going to bring you to the studio next time so that we could so much it's a pleasure yeah, yeah, thank, yeah of thank, course thank yeah, you definitely so much. okay thank you so much it's a pleasure okay have a great day thank you so much for being part of the pro on town business around town on radio my name is mary on ifed i'll be here again tomorrow same time from 9 30 to 10 30 Keep it here. We are the voice of the people, 90.3 FM.